Paul C from wz2k.co.uk here with another Lightroom video tutorial. In this video we're going to take this overexposed image and we're going to correct the information in it and just end up with a much nicer image. Now when you're working with photography unless you're using a graduated filter trying to expose for both the sky and the actual ground is quite difficult. So that's pretty much the problem we've got with this image. You can see that the foreground or the trees and, and so on they don't look too bad, they're a little bit flat and dull, but they're not too bad. The sky on the other hand is completely blown out, washed out, no real colour in it. And the midground, where you can see the city of Dubrovnik is just a little bit misty and looks a little bit flat and dull. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at using various different tools inside Lightroom 4 and we're going to correct this image quickly and easily. Okay, so let's take a little look at some of the problems we've got with this image. As previously mentioned, the sky is pretty much blown out. So we could take the exposure tool, adjust the settings on that, and we can bring back a lot of the detail and some of the colour into the sky. It looks a little flat and dull, but it's brought a lot of the, the colour information back into it. So we know we've got that information within the actual photograph itself. Problem is, by doing that, you can see we just make the, the rest of the image look flat and interesting and completely underexposed in the foreground. So that's not going to work. So let's just reset that value. Now the easiest thing to do is we know we've got the information in the photograph, so we need to use a graduated filter inside Lightroom, which is what we should have done when we actually took the shot, but it was a holiday shot and I didn't really want to carry loads of equipment with me. So if we select the graduated filter tool, click to the top of the image, and I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can constrain this so it doesn't end up all wobbly. We'll drag that down to probably around about the center line about halfway. We don't want to go too far into the actual foliage. That'll do for now. Now what we're going to do is now we can adjust the exposure. At the moment it's just use a, a value of, of 0 0.025 in a, in a plus uh, configuration. But what we're going to do is we're going to start dropping this down to give the information or bring the information back into the sky. Now because we're using the graduated filter you can see the foreground where all the foliage is isn't really being affected. If we find that we want to bring this down a bit further we can easily just drag this down until we get it to exactly where we want until we're happy with it. That's looking pretty good. One other problem with this though is we're kind of losing the blue of the sky. It's brought some of the information back into it but not a huge amount. So what we can do, when you look on the effect panel you can see we've got colour as an option right at the bottom. At the moment it's got an X'd out um, symbol there. That's effectively saying that we can apply a colour overlay to it, but at this point in time it's not using one. So if we click, it brings up a colour picker, you can see we've got a range of predefined colours that we would, might want to use, you know, things like uh, different blues and yellows and things like that. We could choose one of these as a starting point, give it a click, see what we, we like. Looks pretty good. You can see we've got a bit more blue back in the sky now. The clouds are looking nice and, and fluffy. We can adjust this quite easily by using either the eyedropper or we can use the actual slider at the bottom to increase and decrease the actual uh, saturation of the color. So this is one of those things that's going to be done to taste with a, you know each individual image. So I'm going to leave it at that. That looks pretty good. i close that down. Now if I just use the on-off switch we can see the before completely blown out and after a lot of detail brought back in and a bit more color brought into the sky so there's the first step we've introduced a bit of color and brought the cloud detail back so we're looking good so far brought a bit of detail back into the sky we can boost that a little bit more though we can increase the contrast add some highlights in there just to give a bit more definition in the clouds so if we start to increase the contrast we should find the color slightly intensifies and if you find this gets a little bit too much you can easily come back to the color reduce the actual saturation down so you're kind of playing one off against the other to get some contrast in there but not over saturating the sky to make it look completely fake we can also introduce some additional clarity in there to again give it a bit more structure a bit more definition to the clouds if we want to increase the saturation we can do that from within this point as well we can also adjust the shadows and we can increase or decrease the amount of highlights so we can apply a bit more punch to the overall shot. 
So even with those couple of tweaks, if we just switch that back on and off so we can see the effect of the graduated filter, you can see it's a, already a marked improvement just by bringing that detail into the sky. So we're done with the graduated filter and the effects we want to apply to that, so let's just close that down. So that's our graduated filter bringing the sky detail back. Now we can do some global adjustments if we want to to bring out a bit more punch, add some additional clarity. So let's just start off by increasing the clarity to give it a bit more overall contrast to the entire image. We don't want to go too far with this because it can start to look a little bit overpowering. The other thing it's kind of doing as well is it's starting to give the overall image a very cool tint. So let's just give that a bit more punch. Increase the vibrance a little bit so we're working with more subtle increases in color. But as, we, as I've just said, we're getting a kind of cold tone to the image now. So what we can do is we can go back up to the temperature sliders for the white balance. And we could just take that up towards the yellow, just a small amount. We don't want it too far. We don't want to make it look all sort of warm and cozy. It's not that kind of image. And again, this is the kind of thing you do on an image by image basis. This particular image where we've applied the blue overtone to bring it back some of the color to the sky, that's kind of toned the image a little blue. So you may find this isn't always the case depending on what you're doing. So that looks a little better. Okay, so we're looking pretty good so far. Next thing I want to do is I want to introduce some overall contrast to the entire image. As you can see, we've still got the problem with the mid-ground where we're just kind of losing all that. It's, it's just like a little bit wishy-washy, a little bit sort of, eh, nothing really going on there. So let's just take the contrast option. Let's increase that quite a bit. We start to get a bit more contrast in the image. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And one of the things that's been introduced in Lightroom 4 are the highlight and shadow slider controls. Now these work very, very similar fashion to the way that they do inside Photoshop. If you tend to find that you're losing some of your shadow detail, in other words, everything's getting a little too dark, you can use the shadow slider to introduce additional sort of contra or additional light uh, into just the shadow area. And the same goes with the highlights. If you tend to find you're getting blown highlights, you can actually increase or reduce the amount of of light or information you can see within the highlights within your image. So this is quite useful. So if we find that we start to increase uh, the contrast, let's just take this to a bit of an extreme kind of thing a second, you tend to find that then all this foreground foliage is starting to get a little too dark in the shadow. So we're kind of losing that information. So we can use the shadow inf uh, slider to actually bring back some of that detail that we're kind of starting to lose where we're increasing our contrast quite considerably. So you can see that if I just reset that, you can see we've got very, very dark information now down in the trees where we've increased the contrast quite high. But if we take that shadow slider, we can bring back a lot of that detail. So this is a pretty cool tool. Let's take that back down to where it was, which is about 35%, 36%. And let's put that back to where it was originally. Okay. This image to my eyes is still a little overexposed generally. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reduce my exposure maybe by maybe a quarter of a stop, half a stop at most. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And as I just said, I'm going to increase my shadows ever so slightly to bring back the lost information in the foreground. One of the other benefits we're getting by reducing the exposure is you can see we're bringing back some of the detail in the old city walls. So we're not so over over sort of overblown within that information on the, on the photograph. Okay, that's like I said, that's looking pretty good. So we can switch over now to the tone curve and we can start to adjust the highlights, lights, darks and shadows. We're just going to use the tone curve just to do some subtle tweaks. We've done a lot of the, the, the tweaks, the tonal and contrast information tweaks that we wanted to do within the basic tab. But let's just bring a little bit of punch back into these these clouds up in the, the sort of top. I'm not going to go too far, we're just going to increase the highlights ever so slightly, just to give them a little sort of across the horizon light, just a little bit of brightness. And we're going to adjust the darks to bring that down just ever so slightly, which will bring a bit of a contrast back into the mountains behind the city. If we tend to find that we're starting to, to go a little too dark in the foreground, we could either adjust the shadow slider, or alternatively we can adjust the shadows through the tone curve.
both are going to give you pretty much the same kind of effect. They're just going to affect the, to the tonal information within the shadows on your image. So it's pretty subtle. Let's just turn that on and off so we can see the difference. If you look at the horizon line when I turn it off, you should see that'll just dull down a little bit. Nothing too much, but it draws attention to the sky. I'll put you back on. Like I say, it's pretty subtle. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at bringing some of the color back into the actual city uh, roofs. As you can see, they're a beautiful terracotta kind of color, but just because of the haze that we've got in the midground, they're just looking a little bit lost. So let's just close the tone curve window down. Close the basic window down. Let's just go to the HSL, the hue, saturation, and lightness. And we can adjust the orange, which is the predominant color within this. We can just reduce that slightly. And you can see straight away the roofs start to get a little bit more intense. We can jump with the saturation if you want to. Give them a little bit more punch. And the same with the luminance. We could easily just go into the luminance and adjust that just to make sure we've got exactly what we want it. As light or as dark as we want. I mean, that looks a bit better. If I just turn that off, you can see quite a massive difference. And they now start to take on a bit of a life. We could do the same with the sea. But obviously that's going to affect the sky as well. So we can easily just come in and start to tweak the saturation of of the blues if we find that any of the blues are slightly overpowering if we find they're too too weak we can punch them up a little bit and as mentioned earlier this is really down to the image that you're working on to the effect that you're actually looking for just going to adjust the luminance just ever so slightly to bring them just a bit of life back into them and we'll just turn that off see the difference and back on Okay, the final thing we're going to do now is just going to bring a bit of sharpening back into this. Let's just zoom in so we can see some of the details. We'll just go to the details panel. If you see any visible noise within the image, which you may find with a shot like this, I've got a bit of noise in the walls because of the distance. Just going to introduce a little bit of luminous noise reduction just to soften that down. Don't want to go too far because it was shot at ISO 200, I think, anyway. So... It's just a little bit of distance noise that we might be introducing in, especially with the sky being blue and where we've obviously adjusted that. And then finally, let's just increase the sharpening. Let's pump that up to about... Yeah, they should do. And again, we can do a before and after, just clicking that, turn it on and off. You can see if we take a look at the, the city walls and we take a look at the, the trees, that's before, that's after. Nothing too much, but enough to just make the detail pop within the image. Okay, so there's pretty much our final image. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a little look at a before and after and just show how dramatic the change has been and how quick and easy it has been to actually carry out those changes with Inside Lightroom 4. So this is what we started with. Completely flat, dull, overexposed image. And if we just use our history panel, this is what we've ended up with. We well, can see there's quite a considerable difference there. One of the nice things, though, when you're shooting with a digital camera is if you're exposed into the right, in other words, you expose for your shadow information, as long as you don't blow the highlights out completely, you can see from this quick tutorial that you can bring back a huge amount of information which you would consider to have been lost. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial useful. We'd love to hear your comments and your feedback. Pop on over to wz2k.co.uk, pop onto the forums, Visit us on Facebook, visit us on Twitter, or leave a comment on the YouTube video below or the comment section if you're on the website. Till next time, take care.